mute button on. You all that are with us this evening, thank you for coming out. We're going to get straight on into a scripture here, have a little bit of Bible study tonight, and uh, we'll uh, have prayer, and then you can go get turkeys ready. How's that? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll mention some more prayer requests in a few minutes, but right now we're going to just go to the Lord and ask him to help us with our service tonight. And I thank you all that are here, and you folks that are tuned in with us there, we thank you for uh, tuning in with us this evening. I'm aware that a lot of churches had their uh, Wednesday or prayer meeting night last night, uh, so folks could get things ready for their big Thanksgiving day and all that. But uh, we went up and heard Brother Joe, and uh, I'm thankful that we did. Uh, he needed the encouragement, so do remember him. Uh, his mother's in the final stages of her life, so lift all the family up, pray much for them, that God would help them in these days. Uh, she has a stomach cancer that's uh, afflicting her uh, much, so pray that God would give grace and comfort in these hours for them. But we was glad to go, had a good message, had a good, had a good meeting there last night, thankful that the Lord uh, allowed us to be up there and to uh, support our dear brother and encourage him, and I know that it was. Second Samuel this evening, chapter number 22. Second Samuel, chapter 22. I'm going to read a few verses, skip a few, and then give you the thought for this evening. In Second Samuel, chapter 22, verse number 1, the Bible says, David spake unto the Lord the words of this song, in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. And out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. For thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, who, shall be, uh, who I shall be saved from mine, en from mine enemies. When the waves of death come past me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrow of hell come past me about, and the snare of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations of, of heaven moved and shook because I was wroth, because he was wroth. Then went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherub and did fly. He was Seen upon the wings of the wind, he he made darkness prevail round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Verse 17, he sent from above, he took me, or he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Drop on down to verse number 50. 
2 Samuel twenty two fifty. The Bible says, Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king. He showeth mercy to his anointed, unto David and to his seed forevermore. Our Heavenly Father, as I bow before you this evening, I want to thank you for the goodness and the grace of God. Thank you for your mercy and love that you bestowed to us again. Again, we ask you, Lord, cleanse us and purge us, forgive us from all that that may hinder your working power of thy spirit in us and through us this evening. Help each one that's here, those that are tuned in with us. I pray that you'll meet their needs. Bless them. And Lord, give them a good few days. Uh, Lord, that's here before us, a time of thanksgiving. And I pray that, God, we will enter into these days with thank, thankful hearts. We ask you these things tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, I want to give you a thought this evening. As we've looked at verse number 50 there, it says, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee. Now, we know the word therefore means it talks about what has happened before. It talks about what went on before the passage that he's talking about here. He says, therefore, uh, I will give thanks because of what's happened or for that reason, I will give thanks. Now, this chapter runs along with or coincides with chapter 18. It's a synopsis of David's life. It gives us a, a layout of things that's went on in David's life. He does not go into uh, extreme details of things that happened, but he gives a synopsis of things that had taken place in his life as he has served the Lord. And I want us to notice where there is no, troub uh, no trouble, there's no triumph. I want us to notice that where there is no valleys, there's no victories. We're going to also see in this of David, we'll see that where there's no malady, there's no miracles. Where there's no trials, there's no thanks. When we offer a thanks unto someone, it is because of the reason for something that they have done previously for us or to us. This time that we have set aside, uh, this time of the year is a time of thanksgiving. Our forefathers in America set aside this day to give thanks unto the God of heaven for delivering us in the, uh, the land of America that we might praise him, that we might worship him freely and fully as man will. This land was about us being able to serve the God of heaven. As it was for the children of Israel leaving the land of Egypt, so it was for America leaving the lands of England and the foreign lands there to give us a place here that we may serve the God of heaven. In David's day, David has went through many things, and I'm going to give you a few, few of those this evening. I want us to notice what precedes thanks. Maybe give you some ideals or reasoning tonight why we should offer up things. So first of all, I want us to notice uh, the deliverance from death. When you notice here in this passage that I've read to us, in verse 5, 6, and 7, we'll bring our main thoughts. Verse number 5, he says, When the waves of death compass me. David is talking about the experiences of death that he had entered into many different times in his life. Many times throughout the life of David, he had near-death experiences. You are aware that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, 16 and verse 17, as he's standing there uh, 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 or brought before King Saul, Saul has summons for David in chapter 16. Saul has asked for someone to come and to play well before him uh, to soothe him. Saul is looking for someone to soothe him. And as it says there, 1 Samuel 16, verse 17, Saul said of his service, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Saul called for David that he might be a soother to him, but God sent him a soldier. 
Sometimes what we ask for is not actually what we need. God knows what's best for us. God knows what to send us. In verse 19, Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. You go to chapter 17, verse 34. It says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. So David now has come to King Saul. He served him with the harp and with sound, with the music in chapter 16. Now in chapter 17, he's brought them some viticles. They're up on the mountainside. Goliath and the Philistines are on the other mountainside. Before them is the valley. And it's the valley where David will go down into and come forth victorious. No valleys, no victories. Oftentimes we try to pray ourselves out of the will of God. What do you mean, preacher? Well, what I mean there is oftentimes while we go through trials, while we go through troubles, we're begging the God of heaven to deliver us from them, not through them. But it's through those valleys, it's through those trials, it's through those times that we go through that we really do not want to experience that we can look back on and say, can I tell you what God done for me? If we didn't have those, we wouldn't have much testimony, would we? So David here knows what it is to be delivered from death. David, as a young lad, was there in the, in the wilderness watching over the sheepfold as the lion and the bear came to him. And David now can stand before King Saul and all the others and say, I'm thankful for God's deliverance from death. If we was to study throughout these things, we probably could not mention the many times that God has delivered us from the avenues of death. Oftentimes, God's done some deliverance that if God didn't point it out in a specific way, we would not even realize how many times God has delivered us from the avenue of death. But I want us to think of this a little bit deeper when we look at this avenue of death. I want us to think about what what was there, not just, not just what David fought there with a lion and a bear, but think about King Saul, this very king that he played to soothe, this very king that he prepared for service, this very king that he kept on a pedestal of honor, David later on has to battle as an enemy. When you study down the road in Second Samuel, or 1 Samuel 18, You'll find that the folks had begun to sing of greatness of King da- or young David as he went out to battle and led the victories for the, uh, uh, the children of Israel against the Philistines. Many victories he brought. And as he come back to town, the ladies and the folks there began to sing of the greatness of David. And they'd sing those things as David has slain his, uh, uh, Saul has slain his thousands and David has slain his tens of thousands. So they was given more honor and more glory to David. Because of that, you see in 1 Samuel 18 11, Saul got upset with David and Saul cast a javelin at David. Saul was so angered at David that a second attempt was made in 2 Samuel chapter 19 in verse number 10. And Saul sought to smite David even, even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence and he, smote, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Two different occasions that Saul attempted to kill young David. But God was the deliverer for David. Many times we've come through the avenues and the possibilities of death in our life, but God Almighty has been there to deliver us. We ought to have some thanks for him tonight because of his deliverance from our death. But you need to also think on this in a spiritual matter. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 1, the Bible says, And you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were born sinners. Because of that, we had the sentence of death upon us. I'm thankful that God delivered us from that. Ephesians 2, 5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together. By grace ye are saved. It gives us the picture there 
in Ephesians chapter 2 of folks that were under a death penalty, under a death sentence. We were already dead. We just hadn't given it up yet. But God in his mercy and God in his grace, as you read on in Ephesians chapter 2, but God, who is rich in mercy, saved us. I'm thankful that God delivered us from death. And now he's delivered us unto life. Jesus said in John chapter 10, he said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Thankful that Jesus and God Almighty the Father wanted us to have life, not death. The sentence of death was upon us. When you look at that in verse number 6, you see that there's also the mention of the sorrows of hell. So David talks about being delivered from death, but he also talks about being delivered from damnation. Now, we, we're scared of that word because a lot of folks takes that word as being a, a bad word. It's bad in what it means. Now, we can use it in a wrong way. We can structure it in a sentence to where we're being vain with that, and the Lord's not pleased when we use it in a vain sense, but it does have a real sense to it. The word damnation means to have a judgment, a sentence upon us. David here knows what it is to be delivered uh, from the sorrows of hell. He knows what it is to have hell in gath round about him. He knows what it is to feel as if he's about to die and go to the pits of hell. But God, his Savior, his shepherd delivered him. I'm thankful for the deliverance of God Almighty on us. Romans, uh, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That means he will be sentenced and he will be put in a place of damnation, a place of eternal judgment because he refuses to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 11, it talks about that great white throne judgment where God Almighty sits. And the folks that are brought before him are folks that their name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. It says in verse 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth, uh, whose, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up, uh, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever's, uh, whosoever was not found written and the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the damnation that the scripture speaks of. There is damnation upon those that have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's a terrible thing to talk about, and most folks don't want to preach that or talk about that in the day that we live. But listen, lost folk need to be warned. They're not going to live it up in this life and reject Christ and then live it up again in the next life. There will not be a big party after this life for those that are lost. They need to understand they are under a damnation from God Almighty, but they can be delivered. That's the hope, the help that we have. I'm thankful for Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. He says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Thank God we have been delivered. David is saying here in 2 Samuel chapter 22, Because of his deliverance, I offer him thanks. Because of his deliverance from death, because of his deliverance from damnation, I will give him praise. I will give him thanks. He also goes on in chapter uh, 22 in verse number 6. In the latter part of that verse, he talks about the snares of death prevented me. He's talking about the snares. What is a snare? That's something that is used in trickery. That's something that is used in deception. So we have the deliverance from deception Next, we see that, that there, there is a deliverance from the deceptions 
of the devil. I'm thankful that God Almighty delivered me from the deceptions of the devil. Aren't you? You imagine what he could have done for us? The devil, in deceiving us like he did Eve, caused her to not believe what God said, caused her not to believe the outcome of what God said. Hello. And she partook of the fruit that God said not to, Therefore, she was deceived. Adam willingly partook of it. He gives us a picture of Jesus Christ, the Son of God that willingly took upon Him our sins and was willing to be numbered with us, to be named with us, to be labeled as a sinner, to be uh, our Savior and to pay, pay or face our judgment. I'm thankful for that. See, the Lord doesn't want us to be deceived. In Luke chapter 21, verse 8, he said, uh, he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. He's warning us, don't be deceived. 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 6 and verse 9 says, Be not deceived. Chapter 15, verse 33, Be not deceived. Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. All through the scriptures, he teaches us things that we are not to be deceived by. God's not about deception. See, John 8, 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus gave us truth. The devil don't like it, so he either wants to dilute it or dispose of it. He's tried to get rid of the Bible through the years, but he has not ever been successful. So since he can't get rid of it, since he can't dispose of it, he has chosen to dilute it. That's what goes on today. There's so many perverted words out there that are not God's word for God's people. They've not been preserved. They've not been prepared. They've not been uh, set for God's people like the King James Bible has. Amen. They have been changed in ways that dilutes them, that takes away the power and the strength. What they need to take the blood out of there for? Y'all know what blood is? You can, tell a, you can tell a second and third grader about what blood is. They know what blood is. You don't have to find another word to describe blood. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that is the remission of our sins. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Uh, both of those, if I don't have them 7s and 14s mixed up. Uh, both of those speaks of our redemption is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the blood of Jesus that done the work for us. We're not to be deceived. There's no other way. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said there, John 8, 32, And you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. See, the Lord's given us the Holy Ghost of God that will teach us and guide us in all truth. There's no need for God's people to be deceived about things. We have the truth of God's word that will lead us, that will guide us. And when we seek out truth, God will give us truth. Amen. So David speaks of being delivered from the snares, those trickeries, those set up things. See those snares, what a picture of a snare is, we call them today traps. You take, you take and set up this, this little uh, camouflage thing in the, in the woods that looks nice and cute, and there'll be a little bit of fruit or there'll be a little bit of a, a food a particle laying there for the animals to come and get. And when they walk up and get close enough to get the fruit or the meat uh, that has been prepared for them, there's a snare set. There's a trap set. Y'all know what, a, know what a, a rabbit box is, don't you? You know, we make a, we make a nice long box, and in the back of it we'll put some fruit that the rabbits like. And as they go in, they trip this little lever and the door slides down and then you go pick that up and you can have rabbit dumplings. What happened? You tricked it. You snared it. 
You deceived it into thinking it was going to get something for nothing. That's what the devil does. He always tries to trick folks into thinking they're going to get something for nothing. Listen, everything comes with a cost. Everything comes with a cost. My salvation comes with a high cost. And Jesus paid it all. Thank God for that. Aren't you glad? Thank God we have the truth. Something we can be thankful for tonight. We can be thankful that God has delivered us from death. We can be thankful that God has delivered us from deception. God's, God's doing great things for us. He delivered us from death, damnation, and deception. I'm thankful for the deliverance that the Lord God has given us, aren't you? Not only has he delivered us from the deception, but I want us to look at the last thing. Verse number 7, I want you to look at that. It says, in distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple and my cry did enter into his ears. David talks about his distresses here. Now this, listen, this includes everything that troubles you. I, I, I give you the definition of it there so you can see it. Uh, the definition of distress is a tight place. You ever been in a tight place? We, we say today, we'll say, I was in a per tight predicament. Or you can say you was in an affliction or afflicted. Talks about anguish, talks about being in a close place, talks about distress, talks about the enemy, talks about a flint or a foe, a narrow or a small place, tribulations or trouble, that's distresses. We all know what afflictions is. We know what tribulations is. We know what troubles is. David said, I was in my distress. I called upon the Lord. And he heard my cry. Aren't you glad that we've got a God that can hear? You know, I like, I like, I like the descriptions in the Psalms there where uh, it talks about them calling on their God and he hath no ears to hear and no hands to handle. I'm glad that I've got a God that's got ears to hear and hands to handle, aren't you? I'm glad my God's alive and well and sitting on the throne with his ear towards his people. I'm thankful we have that kind of a God. Now, we've got something to be thankful for. Now, we could sit here tonight and go through testimonies and talk about all that we've been through, the many times of distresses that we've had to face, and God has brought us through them. Listen, we wouldn't have a much of a testimony if we never had any distresses. We wouldn't have much of a testimony if we had never been through any troubles or trials. Uh, the lady sings a song, even in the valley, God is good, and, and he is good in the valley. But listen, sometimes if it wasn't for the valleys, we wouldn't know much about God. We wouldn't know about the delivering power of God from death, damnation. We wouldn't know about the delivering power of God from deceptions. Boy, how many times have we almost, almost took the bait, almost fell into the snare, and God give us a little light, God give us a little wisdom, God give us a little truth and let us see through some things. Thank God for his deliverance. Thank God for his deliverance through our distresses. I got to thinking, I saw thinking about this earlier today. I thought about, I thought about Elijah. Y'all know Elijah? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Elijah? Elijah, what? The rain. What did he do about rain? He held it till he prayed three and a half years. You would know that Elijah was a man of powerful prayer had it not been for the drought. Uh, Brother Joel was talking last night about Elijah in the brook. The brook dried up. And God was able to deliver Elijah even though the brook dried up. He sent him over to a widow's house. Now I know, I know, I, I know I ain't nowhere near as smart as God because I wouldn't have sent Elijah to the widow's house. I'd have sent him to the king's palace where there's plenty. He sent him to a lady that was filled with poverty. She's about to perish. Her husband's done died. She's got one son that's a living. Hey, listen, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know about the delivering power of God Almighty had it not been for the death of that son. God raised that boy up. He died, but God raised him up. Look at what all God did through those times of distresses that Elijah went through went through, had victory. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all thinking about turkey too much. <laughs> Think about the things that God's brought you through. 
tonight. Take a, take a few minutes and think about some of the distresses that God's brought you through. Those times when you bit all your fingernails off and you needed a little something else to help calm your nerves. When it seemed like all that you could do was nothing. All that you could do was, was helpless. But then you cried out to the God of heaven and you said, Oh God! And God said, I'm right here, son. Here, let me give you just a little bit of help in your distress. Aren't you glad that we got a God in heaven that can deliver us from our distresses? When we're freaking out, as we would say, when we're going nuts, as we would say, when it looks like there's no hope and there's no help, and then God. Amen. Boy, I tell you, I've heard, heard several good delivering stories this week. We listened last night to one of our brothers that was singing up there in the meeting how that his wife had to go to the doctor and they had to do a procedure and they thought it was going to be pretty serious because they are going to have to do a, a double surgery. One surgery, take a break, do another surgery. But God, God moved in that situation and they done the one procedure and said everything's all right, no need for nothing else, everything's good. Isn't it amazing what God can do? Amen. But we wouldn't know what God could do if we didn't ever go through nothing. You know, we need to go through some things every once in a while. I, I, was, I was thinking, you know, my opening text over there where Paul said, let us in everything give thanks. That's hard to do. It's hard to do sometimes. It's hard to say, Lord, thank you for this valley that I walked through today. You know, you know, somebody, somebody went through a pretty deep valley to write that song. Thank you for every hill I climb. Thank you for every time the sun didn't shine. Thank you for the valley I walked through today. See, we, 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 we get to the place that we can say thank you for the valleys. We've got victories. We're, we're headed for the victory. We're, we're in a place where God can do great things. God can bless us. God can help us. God can, God can conquer great things in us. Listen, you think, about, you think about Joshua and the children of Israel. They had to cross the River Jordan. Well, there's no reason for them to have an easy road. Their forefathers, their parents had to cross the Red Sea. What, what makes us think we're going to get an easy road? Hey, but you know what? When they got to the other side of Jordan, you know what they could do? Woo! Praise the Lord! We crossed Jordan. She's all swelled out of her bank, but we got a God in heaven that's able to push her back and let us cross. Joshua said, that's good, children. Keep praising him because we got another problem. We got, a, we got a walled city called Jericho before us and uh, God's going to deliver it to us. It's going to be all right. Here, what we're going to do, we're going to walk around that place seven times. We're going to go around it every day one time. We ain't going to say nothing. You ain't going to open your mouth. You can't say nothing. Now, that'd be hard for a lot of folk <laughs> to walk all the way around a city and not say a word. You can't comment on the drapes in the windows. Can't talk about the beautiful architect. Boy, I want, I want my husband to build me a roof like that on my, on my balcony. No, you can't say nothing. You got to walk around there quiet. And then on the seventh day, we're going to walk around it seven times. And when, when Joshua gives an order, we're going to shout. I don't know about y'all, but there's soldiers up on that wall. Did y'all know that? They've got swords and spears and and, and, and bows and arrows, and they're up there on the wall watching us walk around this place. Just don't know when they're going to start shooting at us. And we're going to go around seven times. I mean, by the time you get to going around the second time, they, they got you dialed in, buddy. They done got how many paces you're making, you know, and got it all timed. They fixed to put an arrow in you. You ever thought about how God delivered the children of Israel? And walking around the walls of Jericho. But you know what we do? We sing about that. How that the walls fail. Uh, Kenny and his, his daddy-in-law and all that crowd back years ago used to sing about the walls and how they fail. And uh, man, and the walls came down. Amen. You can't, you can't sing about the walls coming down if you don't ever go through the journey. 
You can't talk about the valleys that God's delivered you through. You can't speak of the victories that God's given you if you don't ever have a valley. You can't rejoice in the trials that you've come through and the troubles you've come through if you don't ever go through them. And we'd be no different than this lost world that we live in. But see, we've got something to say. Thank you, Lord, for the valley that I walked through today. You know, that's hard to do. It is for me. It's hard, it's hard for me to say, thank you, Lord, for the valley that I walked through today. It's hard, it's hard for me to say, thank you, Lord, for the trials that I'm going through today. It's hard for me to say, thank you, Lord, for the troubles that I've been experiencing. I mean, it, it's, hard, it's hard to say thank you when the, when the motor shuts down on your trailer and truck as you're going up over a mountain between Tennessee and Kentucky. I made up my mind. Folk, I ain't all super spiritual. We're going up that mountain, and that truck started spitting and sputting, going up through there, and I'm like, oh, my, what is happening now? I got to thinking about my distress level had went way out the top. And I look out the back, look out through that side mirror, and it looked like a freight train blowing black smoke out the back of my tailpipe. I knowed we had trouble. We're crossing a mountain, pulling my home behind me. I ain't got no bank account to replace this motor. I'd made up my mind that regardless of what we went through at that point, I was going to give God thanks and praise. I told my wife, I said, it's bad, I know, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. I got out of my truck and I walked around there and I give God thanks. I praised the Lord before he ever done anything for us in that situation. You know what God done? Paid for the whole thing. Paid for every penny. Towed us an hour from the place we were all the way up to the shop and the place where we was going to to preach. Towed us all up there and that was all paid for before, before the wrecker ever come to me. I didn't know that. I'm thinking, Lord, what's this going to cost me? How am I going to pay for this? I can't trade off my youngins and my wife. They won't take them. I ain't got but a gun or two with me in my trailer. I, I ain't got much to trade off here. I'm in trouble. What am I going to But I praise the Lord anyhow. You know what found out? They'd done some work on it back in Rome, Georgia, and they left a, a bolt or a pin out of the steering column. Had we crossed on over that mountain and come down the other side, it would have jarred out, and, the, and the, the mechanic told us that it was God's protection that that motor shut down on us. Had it not done that, we would have probably crashed and died coming down the other side of the mountain. See, sometimes God's got blessings for you. But on, on, on top of that, not only did God do, do that in protecting us, God also provided everything that was needed but there's somebody up there that paid for that, and God blessed them for doing it. Amen. Brother Joe said last night, God can't bless a work you don't do. I put that on Facebook today so everybody can see that God can't bless a work you don't do. God can't bless a tithe you don't give. If you don't give it, if you don't tithe, God can't bless it. So a lot of folks are missing out on blessings because they're not doing it. Amen. So we see the deliverance from deception, but we also see the deliverance from distress. Romans 8.35 said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distresses or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? There's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. There's, there's no distress. There's no troubles that you'll go through. There's no valley so low. There's, no, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. There's nothing. Nothing. The Lord, the Lord himself shall deliver us. David went through a long list of describing the power and the goodness of God as he started in there how that God heard him in verse 7 and in verse 8, 9, 10 he talks about how the earth shook and, and trembled and the foundations of heaven moved and shook 
Why? Now, y'all get a hold of that. Because David said, Father, Lord, need some help. And the heavens shook and the earth trembled. God came down to where he was and met with him. <coughs> you know, a lot of times we don't get that enjoyment of God's presence as much as we can if we don't go through some things. <coughs> Every one of us tonight has had to go through some things in life that we should give God thanks for tonight. It's hard to now. It's hard. <clears throat> but we need to thank the Lord for delivering us from death. We need to thank the Lord for delivering us from damnation. We need to thank the Lord for delivering us from deception. And we ought to thank the Lord for delivering us from our distresses. Tonight, some of us are sitting in a lot more ease than we have in days gone by. We're doing a lot better tonight, a lot less stress than what we've had in days gone by. Because God. Some are, are going through some valleys tonight. I'm going to mention some folks here in a few moments that we're going to pray for. Some of us are going through some things that we don't understand it. Listen, can I give you some encouragement? Thank God for it now. When you can thank God for the valleys, when you can thank God for the trials, when you can thank God for the tribulations while you're in them, God can bring forth great rewards for you and others about you as you come victorious through those valleys. And I heard one, one preacher make a comment that it was when he gave thanks to God that God delivered him from the deep valley that he had been in. I've heard several make that comment. You know, there's a scripture for a guy that went through some great troubles. There's scripture for a guy that went through some great heartaches. In, in the midst of his troubles, in the midst of his heartaches, in the midst of his lowest valley, lost everything. In the midst of all of that, he had three friends that showed up, and I just told you who he was, didn't I? He had three friends showed up and told him how much he deserved what he was going through. That ain't what God said. God said he was the best man in the land. God said he was upright. God said he was perfect. God said he eschewed evil. God gave great testimony of the life of Job before he went into the trials. But his three friends kept pushing him down further and further and further. You know what brought deliverance to Job? I believe it's chapter 38. He thanks God and he prayed for his friends. See, when we get to where we can thank the Lord for all things, Paul said, thank God in all things. That's as long as I believe it is. Thank God in all things. When we can thank God for all things we're going through, God can bring forth great blessings. See, a lot of times we're going through trials, we're going through tribulations, we're going through the valleys that we might learn to praise him even in the valleys. Think about Daniel. And we read that, and I, y all, y all, maybe y'all don't do it, but I read that sometimes and I read the story of Daniel in a lion's den. I read a story about a man that goes into the lion's den. We need to make it real in our heart. Because it's real. It's a real event that took place in the life of Daniel. He was thrown into a lion's den. Y'all, lions don't bother y'all? Do me? I'm scared of them. Because see, I'm one of them things that they like to eat on. They like meat and flesh. And, and they like fat people's. So I'm dangered when I'm around the lions. Now you think about being cast into a lion's den. See, in that, in that day, typically those lions would have to go days without being fed so that when something come in as this situation with Daniel, they would quickly devour him. But Daniel goes into the lion's den and he's still praying and praising the Lord. So you've got to go through some things in life before you get to the mature level to where you can praise the Lord in the valley. 
you can thank God for his goodness. One of my preacher friends uh, from when we traveled a lot, Brother Joe Bryant, his dear wife, day before yesterday, had what they thought was a heart attack, come to find out she was having a vowel trouble with one of her vowels of her heart. <clears throat> they went in and replaced that vow. But before she went in, he asked for prayer and he praised the Lord. He thanked God for what he was doing. I thought it strange until I settled into my study and you go to thinking about it. How's a man thank God for a valley he's going through? Because, see, he's already been down the road enough. He's a, an experienced man with some years behind him. He knows God's up to something. When you're down in a valley, God's up to something for you. Amen. You just you get a hold of that. You let God settle that in you. Help God. Let God help you to know that if you're going through a trial, if you're going through trouble, God's got a victory for you. There's something God's going to do. Now we see the Goliaths, we see the giants, and we think, man, ain't no way I can handle that. Yet, what did God do? God brought them through it. God give little old ruddy boy David, little old 17 year old boy, the faith to proceed into the valley. David come off of a mountaintop on purpose, went down in a valley because he knew and believed that God was going to give him the victory. Why? Because he'd already faced a lion and a bear. See, when we've come through some things, we learn to praise the Lord and give him the glory. David already gave glory and praise to God and thanks to God for the victory before he ever, before he ever slung his rock at, at, the, at the Goliath. He done told him, God's going to give me them. God shall deliver you into my hands this day. That's what he said before he ever spun that sling around. Why? Because he's already been through some things. Hey, folks, let's take, let's take what God's done for some others and just believe God is going to do for us what he did for others. Amen? We go through the valleys. We go through the troubles. We go through the trials. We don't know what God's going to do in it, but we know God's going to do good in it. Before being thankful, you've got to go through some things. Folks aren't very thankful if they hadn't ever been through much. You remember the Lord spoke of that lady there? He gave that parable between the man and the lady, and, and, and he says, Of whom hath been forgiven much, loveth much. Those that's been delivered has got more praise and thanks for God than those that don't recognize what God's delivered them from. Maybe in these days you'll take a few moments and think about what God's done for you. Listen, the first point ought to be enough for us to offer thanks and praise to him. He's delivered us from death. You're saved and born again tonight. God Almighty has delivered you from death. Don't let that just fall as words out of your mouth. Real, realize what that is. You had a death sentence. You had a damnation upon you, and God delivered you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ from that. That's enough right there to say thank you, Lord. We ought to thank him tonight. We ought to have a heart filled with thanks and give him the praise and the glory for what he's did. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to offer the word. Use it for your honor and your glory. Forgive us where we fail you and come short. Help us tonight and in these days that we might be thankful for all the deliverances that you've given us. As you did for David, God, we didn't go through near what he went through. There he was that day trapped in a cave and God, you delivered him from the hand of Saul. You delivered him twice from the javelin that Saul threw at him. God, you, you did much in the life of David. Thank you. Thank you. Even down in Ziglag, you gave great deliverance. His, his wife, his children were taken. His stuff was taken, but God, you gave deliverance, and he got it all back. You're a, you're a God of deliverance. Thank you for all that you did for us. And we bless your sweet and your holy name. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, remember tonight, pray, pray over these next many days for Brother Joe Arthur's mother. She has a stomach cancer that there's nothing much that they can do for her. They done a procedure the other day and uh, helped her some, but it's not uh, a fixable deal for her because of her 
uh, her body and, and her years, it's, uh, it's, it's not a fixable thing for them. God can, but, you know, God, God, God may be wanting her more to come home than to stay here with us. So uh, just pray for God's grace and deliverance in that. Pray for Brother Joe and uh, his family. Uh, she's a sweet, dear lady. We love her to pieces. And uh, just pray that God will work in that situation. Remember Brother Jack Leard? Uh, he's going to spend Thanksgiving, looks like, in the hospital. So pray much for him. Pray for his family. Uh, pray the doctors can get him cleared up and uh, be able to get home pretty soon. He's still having some trouble with that knee. And uh, so do lift him up. I'm going to go by and check on him again here on the way home in a little bit. Uh, but do lift him up. Pray that God would help him and God would strengthen him. And God give him the grace that he needs in this time and his dear wife as well. Remember Miss Nikki? She's been having some more uh, issues, but she needs our prayer. So uh, do pray for Nikki. Lift her up to the Lord in prayer. Uh, God would help her. All right. Any other requests this evening before we close out tonight? Remember Brother Mike. Do always pray for him. Lord, touch and help him with his little battle. And uh, God will give the victory. Amen. Amen. Another, another praise that we can offer up. Uh, how God's done and, and God given the victory. Amen. Keep praying. All right, anyone else? Amen. 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 Yeah, you better look out. But I will tear the house down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah, Brittany's situation was a lot more severe than what it come out looking like. Uh, when you do when you do some in depth study of what could have been uh, could have been a death experience. Uh, she could have been disabled the rest of her life. There's so many things that it could have done. Uh, for where those places were in her body, it could have shut down a lot of different things. Uh, but thank the Lord for good help and good doctors and, and leadership to get to the right places. Thank God for all that he's done. And just pray she'll continually heal up. Amen. She ain't plumb there yet, and she needs to remember that. Take it easy. Amen. Amen. Remember Trigger. He's not doing well, so pray for him. Remember Clarence. He's got some health issues. God's, God's working and helping there, but thank the, God, thank, thank the Lord for that. But uh, pray Clarence will do what he needs to do too. Amen. Amen. He got a little bit of that stubbornness. <clears throat> well, it, you know, they say that the more you're married, the longer you're married, you become, 
you act like the other. I hope your turkey's already cooked, because if not, you just cooked your goose right there, buddy. <laughs> uh, amen. All right. Anyone else got a request tonight? Miss Karen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, remember Miss Sherry passed. Yeah, I'd seen that one, too. Remember that? It's, it seemed like I know her, but I don't. I couldn't put the place into it, but. Remember that couple folks just passed on. Uh, pray the Lord will help the families involved with that. Yeah, good to see Miss Betty and Young in her pretty little thing. Ain't she pretty? Amen. Good to see them with us tonight. All right. Anyone else got a request? Amen. Amen. I'm not here, but I don't know what else. And like I say, whatever he has, I'm, I'm sure that there's something going to come good out of it. Amen. Whatever the situation. Amen. And I had a little thing the other week. Uh, a lady spoke at some ladies' meeting that I go to. And um, I take this thing of making, changing my bed. You know, I have to change sheets. I would say, oh, I hate changing sheets. But I'd say, oh, you. Amen. And so last week when I had to change the bed, I didn't say that. I, I thought, I'm changing it because God has given me a bed to sleep on. And I, have, I love making up my bed last week. So Amen. It's just, you got to be thankful. Amen. Yes, ma'am. There's a bunch of folks that ain't got nothing tonight. That's that's my experience in Haiti helped me so much, and I'm glad I was young, because uh, God helped me to be thankful. I seriously, I, if people think I'm kidding it. I come back thankful I had shoelaces for my shoes. I I don't know how anybody could have any sense about them and wear flip flops or slides. How do you keep the crazy things on? Evidently, you don't work or do any kind of activities with them things on because I can't keep them on my feet. And I honestly was thankful. I said that jokingly, y'all. I, I honestly thankful, though, when I come back that I had shoelaces. I was thankful I had socks to wear and underclothes to wear. Folk down there didn't have nothing. You see folk walking around. Uh, they, they, was, they was wearing boxes, literally, bags. And uh, it was, it's the, most poverty country in the world is Haiti. So, yeah, we got lots to be thankful for here. I got several pair of boots, several pair of dress shoes, several pair of tennis shoes, drawer full of clothes to wear. Uh, God been good to us. I got a whole lot more than one suit, and uh, you know I know there's folks that's that's not as blessed in that respect as we have been. So thank God for all that He's done. He's blessed us. Got a nice brick home to live in. Amen. And and like you, I've, I'm thankful for sheets. I don't like sleeping on a raw bed. If you went with us and traveled as we did, you'd sleep in some of those places. You'd be very thankful for a decent bed. We slept in a tire shop one night. And and was fine. We was okay with it. God blessed us. We was able to do. We slept in all kinds of crazy places. Amen. Uh, basements and everything but a barn, I guess. But uh, thank the Lord. He's good to us. Anyone else got something tonight? Yes, ma'am. Remember those that's lost loved ones, Miss Teresa and the Beatty family uh, and the loss of their papa and Teresa, her dad. Uh, be tough this Thanksgiving, those empty seats. Uh, so pray the Lord will bless them and help them. And then 
Uh, Miss Kelly and the kids really need prayer. Kelly needs a lot of prayer. So lift up Kelly. She needs the Lord to touch her physically. Uh, she's got a lot of ailments that she's dealing with, so pray God would help her. Amen? All right, anyone else got a request? Ms. Kay? <clears throat> Please, yes. Amen. Amen. Hamas. Right. Right. He's not. Pray the Lord would save him and that bunch around him. They need Jesus up there, so pray the Lord on them. Amen. Revival in the White House would help us. Yes, sir. Remember, remember Clarence's sister. Lift her up to the Lord in prayer. Pray God to help her. She's got medical needs there as well. Remember Granny Shirley tonight. She's not feeling good. and She's got a, a little issue going on there at the house. So pray the Lord's will be done in all that. Help and bless her. Amen. Tumor. All right, remember Ann Alton in December the 11th. She's got a procedure coming up. And then Judy's is the 20th. Judy's got a procedure, her thyroid there. Pray that all that's good. And the uh, Lord give healing to her. A preacher that uh, you most of you probably haven't heard of, but uh, a good preacher man in our land has went through a cancer surgery the Lord uh, helped him come through the surgery but he had to lose his voice box so pray for him and his dear family uh, as he goes through the changes of ministry and what God will help him to do and uh, be successful I told Judy I said the only thing I can figure is is he's going to be able to sit down maybe and have some time to put some book stuff out and uh, be a blessing you know Oliver Green got where he couldn't travel and he thought the ministry was over and uh, what really God done is he set him down at a desk and let him preach to the world and put together some of the best commentaries, helpful, most helpful commentaries available to man. And uh, what sometimes we look as a problem or a handicap turns out to be God's will. Amen. Hard to accept sometimes. So just pray the Lord help us to receive whatsoever comes our way. Amen. Be thankful in everything. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, remember the emergency personnel, EMS, fire and rescue, uh, law enforcement, doctors, nurses, uh, all these folks that's going to be working through the holiday while we get to sit back and take it easy. Pray God would bless them and give them an easy couple of shifts. Amen? Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. I used to... I used to work it, and I know, and it seems like sometimes at Thanksgiving it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, folk get sitting around, they're not as friendly and lovable as they ought to be, amen. So pray, pray the Lord bless uh, the family time and uh, help everybody in these days, amen. Anyone else? Yes, Miss Betty.
All right. Pray for Miss Betty and uh, her children. Lord, move there. Anyone else? Amen. I got a great report from my doctor today. They done an AKG and said I still got a heart. He didn't say it's a good one. He just said I had one. No, he said it was good. Everything was good. All the blood work was doing good. My one level's just died a little bit, but it's it's no problem. It's just it's close enough that it ain't a problem. My thyroid, um, but uh, pray all that'll be what it needs to be. But it was good. Other than that, everything was a good report. And I had a good visit with him, and I thank the Lord for him. He's a good doctor, an honorable doctor, and I just pray for him and his, his practice. Amen. All right, anyone else got a request tonight? All right, remember Brother Rick and Miss Donna? Remember his dad? Thank the Lord he's able to come to service Sunday. Uh, continue to pray he gets all healed up. Amen. Anyone else? All right, we're going to pray, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful turkey day. Amen? Amen. Now, remember, gluttony is eating to the point of sickness, so if you'll stop just shout at you, will be all right. I probably will. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for knowing us and loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for protection. Thank you, Lord, for all of your providences that you've given us. Lord, thank you for the plan that you've laid out that would work best for our lives. I pray for your guidance that we might follow your plan. I pray for wisdom that we might know what and how to do things. Lord, we pray for each of these requests that has been mentioned tonight, that God, in your will and in your power, you would answer each request. You'd move on them. Some were mentioned of uh, loss of loved ones. I pray that, God, you would be with the families involved and give them grace and strength and comfort as they go through these dark valleys. Lord, we pray for the afflicted, those that's got sicknesses and things going on, for Brother Jack there in the hospital, Miss Nikki at home, and others that are at home, Miss Kelly and all that she's battling, uh, Granny Shirley. Others, Lord, may have some things going on. Pray that you'd be with them. I ask, Father, for your healing hand that you'd touch them and lift them up, give them strength and health that they might be able to serve you. Lord, be able to be faithful and be back in the house of the Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'd help those that was mentioned as lost, Paul, Janice, uh, the other young lady that's on Judy's heart, and we know who it is. God, we just pray that you'd uh, touch her and help her to come to know you as a personal Savior. Father, we pray that you'd be with the youngins as they're away there in Georgia with their dad for the for the holidays that you'd watch over and keep them safe pray that you'd bless and continue to work in uh, Brittany's life give her health and strength lead and guide and Lord we pray that you'd touch Clarence help him with his health to do that what's needed touch his body give him healing pray for his sister God that you'd touch her you know what she needs in health and in her soul and ask that Lord you'd attend to that according to thy power that you'd move there and Lord we ask a few others had unspokens and specials. Lord, you know the, the needs behind each of those. We ask that God, thy will be done with those. Bless our church. Lord, help us to grow in spirit and in truth. Lord, we also ask that you'd help us to grow our children ministry, Lord, that we could uh, reach the young folks in our area, be able to be a blessing to them, teach them about you, that they might grow in, in wisdom and knowledge of you. And for those that are unsaved, that they might be saved by your marvelous grace. Father, watch over each and every one these holidays. I know there'll be uh, folks out there that's uh, careless. Uh, other folks' lives doesn't matter to them at all. And I pray that, God, you'd give that hedge of protection about all your peoples. Lord, I pray for those that's working, the EMS, the fire, rescue. Uh, pray for the doctors, the nurses, law enforcement. Lord, that you'd deal and help each of those as they uh, work through these a uh, couple of days of holiday, that God, you'd protect them, give them an easy shift. Lord, make things easy. Keep people calm. Keep people unharmed and safe. And Lord, we'll thank you for that. Thank you again for the word of God, for this place and this privilege to come here. Thank you for letting us stand, giving us a word to say. Pray thy will to be done in each and every one of our lives and at this place we ask. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.